Hi, my name is Janelle Hodge, and I'm a lab director in Cytogenetics and Molecular Genetics at Indiana University. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the Compendium of Cancer Genome Aberrations on behalf of the CCJ Workgroup, as well as the Genomic Resources Development Committee. Nothing to disclose. What is the CCGA? It's a CGC-supported resource, number one. Um, but the idea is really that while there are excellent websites out there to evaluate small variants like point mutations and indels, the CCGA is targeted to provide a resource for interpreting cancer cases with particular emphasis on copy number and structural rearrangements. And this content is structured based on the current WHO classifications, which means that it's presented in the way our community interprets these cases. We also show visualizations of the data to illustrate important patterns. So this is a wiki style interface. So it's based on expert crowdsourcing. This means that it's being created by our community for our community. And importantly, the CCGA can transform as quickly as information is changing, which is the hallmark of our field right now. And the idea is that you have real time editing. So you're doing a case, you find another paper that might be of interest to you seeing it again in the future and, and the whole community being able to see it, you can add that right in as an author so it's there for the future. So to find the site, you go to ccga.io. That's all you have to type in the browser. Um, and IO, some people like this, IO is also one of the moons of the planet Jupiter. So if that helps you, <laughs> remember it, ccga.io. There's a lot of support behind this effort. So the CGC Board of Directors oversees CGC committees, one of which is the Genomic Resources Development Committee, and that's really a steering committee for this effort. So, you know, creating policy, setting priorities, direction, budget, and we do have an IT assistant who is budgeted to help with this site. We have an editor-in-chief who then coordinates with the associate editors who are over different disease sections, and they work with the authors in those sections. Here is the GRDC members. You can see that there's a diverse range of experience and institutions. The associate editors of our current disease sections are, are shown here. And of course, we're adding associate editors as we add on additional big disease sections. And all of these people are involved in the work group in addition to these individuals. And this work group is much more flexible with additional members coming in and out as we're working on a whole bunch of different projects, such as the data visualizations, et cetera, for this effort. This is a really fun group of people. I just had to show this picture. I love it. This is from the CGC um, meeting last year. <laughs> really nice people. Okay, so I mentioned it's, it's organized based on the WHO. So what I'm going to show you today is content from AML. This is the first completed work. The other disease sections are in various states of completion. So we make pages based on all the WHO diseases. You can see listed on the right, as well as any additional entities that we think are important to the field. We spend a lot of time making this really easy to author content. So we have preloaded templates, and you'll see areas that say put your text here, and that's where you type, and as well as things like tables, where it'll give an example of what kind of data goes in that table. And this whole thing functions like Microsoft Word. So for example, if you want to make something bolded, you would highlight the word, go up to the top, do the drop down, select bold, and then the word becomes bolded. Adding references is really easy. It's automatic and PMID based. So at the top, so as you click in the wherever you want in the template for the reference to go, at the top and you click, you click on site, and this box will pop up. And in the automatic tab, you just put in the PMID and say generate, and then you say insert the reference, and it goes in there. And it will auto-populate a reference list at the bottom. And if you move references around, you know, in the in the template, um, it will auto-fix it in the references. So all you have to do is put in your PMID. And the preloaded templates, we have three kinds. One is the disease group overview. So for example, AML, um, this first one is over the entire section of AML. So it has links to every single entity. And there are some sub entities like the one listed there, AML for current genetic abnormalities that also has so many of its own sub entities. So that becomes its own overview page within this. And then we have a disease entity or genetic alteration specific templates. And this is the deep dive into content. So for example, AML within version 16. And lastly, we have the gene-specific pages. So like MY, MYH11 has its own page. All right, I'm going to just highlight some aspects of some of these pages for you. 
So here is um, AML. This is a disease group overview page. And I wanted to show you the data visualizations I mentioned. So here is a circles plot. So you have a three-dimensional display of the chromosomal relationships. So in the middle there, all those different links that, that indicates rearrangements between chromosomes. You can see copy number in the red and blue bars around it. And then you can also have other mutations at the top there. Below, you see a plot lead um, that you can show aggregated copy number aberration data and the frequency based on, you know, the bigger the bar, the more frequent that was found in, in data. This is an example of um, TCGA data in AML. We are also including content from the CGC workgroup publications. So here's recurrent genetic abnormalities in AML in this table has been put in and links are included to any related genes as well as the references. And then here is the kind of landing page aspect of the overview page, which means so all the links to all the related content is right here. So if you want something with AML on the site, go to the AML landing page and you can get all these links to all the entities. Let's talk about one of the specific disease entities. So let's go with AML with inversion 16, translocation 16, 16. So again, this is the deeper dive. So you can see all this information. You can see all these categories listed below, pathology, testing methods, pathways, etc. And we like to put in images. So here's the images of the 1616 translocation as well as the inversion. In terms of genetic related information, I like this um, content at the top here of this table because you actually can see which side the 5' or 3' prime of a gene is important and which is important for the derivative. Um, you can look at chromosomal patterns, for example, in renal. It's the pattern of gain and loss, not necessarily a single you know, gain or loss. If you have a single gain or loss, you can talk about it below that. In the next category, you can talk about related mutations and the significance of these findings. Um, and there's also ways to link then to related pages. So core binding factor beta and MYH11 are the genes involved in this rearrangement. So there's links to those gene specific. Speaking of gene specific pages, these also then link to any other related CCGA site data. So whatever diseases are associated with that gene, you'll have links to that. So that the ease is supposed to be, you know, you can just move through this site seamlessly without having to go back and forth. And this also links then to external databases of importance, and we're making more and more of these pages. If we look at the MYH11 page, um, what you'll see is we always put the cytobine genomic coordinates, again, the linked diseases. And I like this table at the bottom because it's a quick look at what is the genetic mechanism. So this is associated with gain of function and translocation fusions. And here is the link to all these external sites. So we, if you click on that, you'll go right to the MYH11 page associated with all these different ones. And we made a list of ones that we try to do for each page. Okay, so that's an overview of the site. So where are we and where are we going? So the CCGA is a resource, again, that's created by our community for our community. And the infrastructure is in place to support this effort. However, to be successful into the future, we must have continued and expanded input from our community members. Future goals is we're going to keep creating content for additional disease entities and other WHO books. We also want to continue to capture the recurrent genetic abnormalities in the CGC workgroup papers that are continuing to come out. And we want to explore collaboration with other community efforts. So please, please, we need your help. Um, here are some big areas that we are currently recruiting for. BALL, TALL, B and T cell lymphoma, other mature B cell neoplasms, and mature T and NK cell neoplasms. If you don't see your favorite disease on this list and you still have an interest in contributing and contributing to something specific, please, please reach out because um, I'm sure we can coordinate. Um, and we are reaching out in general to the community. You've probably seen an email from the CGC asking for you to get involved. We've also had the ABMGG and the CCMG reach out to their fellowship directors. And also we're reaching out in the process right now for a molecular genetics pathology fellowship directors. And the email of importance to get involved is ccga at cancergenomics.org. Benefits to participating. So the process of creating content is just as beneficial as actually having the content available. And the reason is that you learn a lot when you're making these pages. And in addition, you actually are expanding your connections within our community as you're working with these editors. So this is great for fellows, trainees, you know, young faculty. And we have over 60 people already engaged, including 25 trainees. And you can get academic credit for this. You can cite 
CCGA page authorship on your CV. And of course, also creating this content, you and then others can use this for case interpretation. So here is the content provider, so either finished pages or engaged in making pages. And you can see there's 35 people. So it's a lot, a lot of intellectual input. I really want to emphasize trainees are also contributing. So 35 trainees are working with mentors to either make page, a page or are making additional pages. So really thank you to all of these individuals. So please, please get engaged. Um, the website again, ccga.io, and you can see the email there. You can also contact any of the individuals I mentioned that are involved in this effort. And we really encourage thinking about your trainees or yourself uh, getting, giving content and really interacting with us to make this resource for our community. So thank you, and I'm open to questions, you know, anytime. Thank you so much.